Hello everyone, this is Lolly. I am so excited today to come back and work on this bee journal with you, this bee-themed mason jar journal. I'm going to give you a link down below to the entire series so you can see how I've made all these, the cover and these pages so far. I'm really, really excited about today. Now, once I did the cover, I've been doing two pages on each video. But today I'm just going to do one because I'm just so excited about this and I just want to focus on this and how fun it is. So to back up, the first thing I'm doing is, for those of you who are just now joining me, this die set is called the Mason Jar slash Snow Globe die set by Elizabeth Craft. It's also called Snow Globe because if you turn it upside down and use it this way, you've got a snow globe. So. That's the die set. The paper collection is Sweet as Honey by Photoplay. I have both of those, the paper collection and the die set in my shop. So what I did was I got a frame. This is, again, from that paper collection. And in the dies, you have the external die and this window die. So you can just cut it as a solid or you can use the internal window die and use that and to cut out this piece like this. Love it. And what I'm so excited about is that I wanted to play around with printable vellum. Well, you may ask, isn't all vellum printable? Not necessarily. You can play around with what you have. If you have some in your shop, you see this one does say laser and inkjet. I got this uh, for this purpose. I will give you a link down below to where I got it from as well as the other supplies. Now when I, um, I have vellum in my stash and I have had issues with um, inks beating up on it, so to speak. So with this, if I put it, uh, when I create my document, I turned it this way because I knew I wanted to do the jar, the mason jar, and use a die cut on it. So I created a document this way with the words that I wanted. I printed it out and I noticed that when it came out of the printer, it was very moist. The ink was moist and, and very shiny. So I just set it down and I could just watch it drying and soaking up into the vellum. It didn't take long. I mean, like a minute maybe. And then I ran it through the dye machine. And how adorable is this? So I did be kind, joyful, generous, peaceable, supportive, and encouraging. And again, I use the same die as you see for this. And it die cuts just beautifully, nice and crisp. So what I want to do is attach this and this over it. Now another option, I can attach this fully or I could attach it just here so that these actually open up like this, or I can glue these together and attach this as a flap, that's possible. Another option is to create a second one of these frames and put that in the back, mostly for support, you know, to give it more structure. But that way you would always have this window instead of having it attached to this like that, if that makes sense. You would, you would just have it nice and supported but it, was always, it would always be a window. And you can see how it would look with different uh, paper styles behind it. See, it gets kind of hard to read, but that's really pretty. I am going to go ahead and attach all three of these layers together. So uh, since it's vellum and not all liquid glues are going to be happy working with vellum, I'm going to use, I have used the Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive on the vellum before. The easiest way, I like to line the holes up because that's the best way of making sure that I've got this lined up. Then I can just slide the rest over. If you have any extra uh, tape runner, just rub it with your fingers and that will come right off. Isn't that precious? Now let's just take a look at that and see what that looks like backed up on other papers. See, isn't that pretty? Oh, that's really cute. I like that a lot. I like seeing this through there. Ooh, I like that. 
but I haven't used, oh man, oh, this is so hard. <laughs> you know what I'll have to do is I'll have to make another one of these. Okay, so now we're going to put this onto that. And same thing, I'm going to line up the holes. Oh, I love it. Now, I also cut out the jar lid and I did it in the gingham that's also part of this paper collection. Now, also part of the die set that comes with this mason jar are these words that say, thing good things and so I decided I wanted to use those and put that right over the lid here very cute and I also use this die from the whole reinforcement pack from Elizabeth Craft Designs and this is whole reinforcement pack one and one of the ways, if you want to do your whole reinforcers really quickly, you can um, put double-sided adhesive on the backs of your paper before you whole reinforce. And then it's just like a sticker. You just peel the back off of the whole reinforcer and put it down. And I use the same paper for the holes as I did for the words up there. Very sweet. I love it so much that, you know, normally I want to put some sort of embellishment down here in the corner. I need to think about that. Now, another thing is with this die set, there is a little mini jar as well. So I cut that out in this yellow color and I used the lid one to in uh, a dark gray or a charcoal. And I also put a little hole reinforcer on that. The stamp is part of the stamp sentiments that come with the mason jar that says love is sweet. I just stamped that on there and wrapped this little bit. It's not twine, it's that cotton that you use for crochet. And I think I'll just put that through the rings through it like that. And that gives me enough decoration, I think, that I don't have to feel like I have to put something here although these would be cute as well and you could even put gems in the center hole reinforcers don't have to be for hole reinforcers alone let's go ahead and do that whether we do gems in the middle or not and I am going to just use this glue and see how well it works on the vellum Very cute. You know what would be adorable would be little brown centers on that would be cute because then it would look like a sunflower. Okay, so I'm going to take this off just so I can move this over. I want to work on the back and then I'll consider whether to put stones on there. You could also use just the brown, like you could do these whole reinforcers in brown and you know when you're doing that you're actually cutting a hole out. So you could just use that or a regular hole punch to cut brown paper and glue that in the center. Now for the back, I took the graph paper that I've been using that I showed you in the last version, which is this, which is the printable graph paper, and I used the window to cut out the graph paper. But then there's also this, this is kind of like honey dripping down, and I got this in the, I cut that out in this yellow color. I cut that out first, and then I used this to die cut the section I wanted. And I glued that over this. And I also added triple thick Brilliant Brush on Gloss Glaze to make that really shiny like honey. And you could use Glossy Mod Podge. You don't have to use triple thick. Use whatever you have. But that is so adorable, that little extra touch there of making it look like it's honey coming down. It's a beautiful decoration, and yet I still have all this journaling spot right here. I also used the jar lid die and cut out this polka dot. I distressed the edges a little bit with soot and uh, distress ink, just so because there's so much white in this and so much white here, I wanted to really clearly differentiate. 
between those two papers there. Now, if I hadn't put the words on here, you can wrap twine around right around the lid here, or you could still go down here around the jaw. There's nothing to stop you from doing that. It, the tie doesn't always have to go on the lid. This one's not on the lid. So for instance, we could take this twine here. I've been using the black a lot. I think it's really pretty with this. And you can go right in that groove right here. Let's leave a good long tie on that, shall we? See, it's and you still read it, and then you can still see it on the back here as well. Whoops, we don't have it quite where we need it, right there. So that's very adorable. You could also hang charms on these, just a heads up. Oh, I just think that's precious. Okay, let's look at this. I'm just going to fill that in with hole punches. Let's see if I have any brown cardstock like this. These are not exactly the same size holes as what I have here, but it doesn't matter because you can't see that. There we go. Oh, that is so adorable. Very precious. I just love this page so much. And don't forget, you can always do it in layers. Now this will go on there when, when I put the rings all together for the book. And now we have an entirely, and another page right here. Let's put that one right on top of this stack. I am in love. I'm really happy with that. And this is getting really nice and chunky. We're going to make several more pages before we stop and make a back cover. Thank you everyone for watching. Please check the links down below for this whole series. Please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel.